Hello there YouTube, my name is Shruggy and today I'm bringing you a gameplay which I've been meaning to bring you for actually for a very long time. Today I'm playing Gran Turismo 5, I'm bringing you two races. One, an online kart session uh, here from the Eiger Norwan circuit, uh, which actually I did have someone request some karting gameplay from GT5. I had tried uh, to find your comment to give you a shout out but unfortunately I couldn't find it so I'm, my apologies to you. Uh, firstly, but uh, today I'm playing some GT5 at the request of Chris Halliwell171. My apologies, it's taken a little while to do. Uh, but I've been meaning to bring you this gameplay for a long time, and on top of that, I have a quick shout out for Super L Moose, uh, who requested some talk about the Battlefield 3 DLC as I actually was uploading the video. So, unfortunate timing there, hopefully, this makes up for it a bit. Anyway, guys, I'm here today to talk to you about Gran Turismo 5. I'm here to talk about racing, uh, or motorsport in general, and why I love it, and why, frankly, I think if you haven't experienced motorsport in one form or another, be it a game or not, you should definitely check it out because it's one hell of a, one hell of a sport, basically. Um, to talk about the gameplay briefly, so as I've mentioned, this is an online session from uh, from Gran Turismo 5, driving uh, what was ba the original basic go kart from the game. They've added others since this uh, uh, since this race happened. Uh, this was before, I believe, the version two patch. Uh, so. Uh, that might explain a few differences you may see, but a few things to to observe as as I'm driving around predominantly in the top left hand corner is those four blue boxes Those indicate the tire temperature in my tires if they're blue They're cold, but I have a bit of grip they're white their optimum temperature if they're red It's so hot. I've got no grip and you'll see a few times. I'm caught out by that uh, On top of that. This is the first time I actually drove a go-kart around the circuit hence why I make stupid mistakes uh, so my apologies for the odd spin and things, but I'll actually talk about those odd spins and things a bit later anyway. So, Gran Turismo 5 is a hell of a racing game. Now, I haven't played them all. I have a finite amount of time, of course, as does everyone. But now, out of all the racing games I've ever played, I can safely say that GT5 is the best by a country mile. Let me talk about why. So, the thing with, with cars, and as I've mentioned, I'm a bit of a, you know, a gearhead. I love cars. Uh, and I love motor racing as a result, is that the thing with motor racing is that it's more than just one factor. In fact, you've got thousands of factors which go into a successful motor race or a successful race session. Now, it's not just the fact of, say, an athlete has to do their job, but the car has to do their job or its job as well. It needs to be set up properly, it needs to be in good condition, everything else. Same goes for the athlete, the driver. You know, they have to have the best reaction times, the best... Uh, vision, the best sort of strategic thinking and analytical mind possible, uh, on top of being a pretty good driver, you know, there's a lot going on and you've got, in, in addition to that, a team backing those two elements up to make sure that they work at their best. It is the literal and true definition of a team sport you could ever hope to find. And the thing with motor racing, all those elements put together is it's so unpredictable, you always guaranteed something unpredictable will happen. You might be able to predict, I don't know, the gist of a race, but you'd never be able to get all the finite detail. So, motor racing, unfortunately, is one of those things as well, since so much is involved, that unfortunately not very many of us get the opportunity to actually do properly. Um, fortunately, for me, uh, I've had the opportunity to go go-karting a couple of times, and I very much enjoyed it, and it just so happens that I went go-karting a few weeks before Gran Turismo 5 was released, and... Uh, that was an awesome experience in its own right. But the thing which, uh, the thing in particular which I love about games is they give the average Joe like me or you the opportunity to do something that you just wouldn't be able to in real life. Be it drive a racing car or you know go kart or something around an exotic racetrack or being in some dystopian future in Deus Ex. You know it could be anything, and it gives you the opportunity to. Have a go in that world, be a part of that world, do something a little bit different, which you wouldn't be able to do in reality. And racing games for me breaks the barrier of entry in terms of, you know, I don't need hundreds of thousands of pounds to race a top end sports car. I can just spend 40 or so down at my local game shop and pick up Gran Turismo 5. I'm done. And that basically is is why I love racing games. I love racing so much, I really want to do it in real life, it's just too expensive. So for now, I'm going and playing racing games just to keep the fuel that my, my input, my interest alive. And as games advance and evolve, they're becoming more and more real. Now, I mentioned that a few weeks before Gran Turismo 5 came out, I went go-karting. 
Now that was a great experience, and if you've never been go-karting, I can't recommend it enough. It's an amazing thing to do. Uh, go-karts, they might not look much, but boy are they quick. They have an incredible amount of grip for what they are. They're pretty damn nippy, and uh, you get thrown a lot, around a lot in terms of the G-force as well. So it was a really amazing experience, and it was the first time it just happened that time that I've been go-karting in quite a long time, and I really enjoyed it. You know, the, the way that the wheel was heavy, that you couldn't, you know, push the brake too hard because, uh, well, basically the go-karts I was driving then, uh, the brakes were in the rear. There were no sort of brakes on the front uh, axle, so, you know, it was basically like a handbrake. You had to be very careful and, and all the rest. A great challenge, uh, and as I mentioned, you know, all part of the unpredictability and the, the greatness of motorsport. I kid you not, what I was genuinely very scared and happy to find was that Gran Turismo 5's version of go-karting, and karting was new to GT5, um, is how literally real it was. I kid you not, if you had put a blindfold on me and told me to drive, well, well it sounds really dangerous, but if you put a blindfold on me and told me to drive like a real go-kart in the go-kart in GT5, I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference. The feel, the way the thing reacted, how you had to be careful with the brake, everything. It was one for one. It literally scared me. And it scared me so much that I then later went out and bought an £80 steering wheel to see if it was in reality in terms of the actual feel of working the steering wheel. Sure enough, it was. I was going, holy cow, you know, I did this for real a few weeks ago and I'm now doing it again in a game. And of course, this sort of, if you will, uh, background logic in my head about games and everything else, it made me go, damn, this, this is something special. Special indeed, and you know, I've played in a lot of racing games, the first game I ever played, this was back on the Game Boy, was a game, I think it was just called Formula One Race, something like that. To be fair, it wasn't a very good implementation of Formula One, but I digress. You know, by far and away, Gran Turismo, it got my attention, or Gran Turismo 5, I should say, got my attention. And having played sort of all the previous Gran Turismo games, it made me go, wow, you mean business, don't you? You really do. Um, and here's a little bit of brinksmanship here, a little bit of gamesmanship, a little bit of strategy. I knew that if I led into the last corner, this guy would have me on the exit. So, uh, so I try and line him out on the outside and do the undercut underneath. Does it work? Oh yeah, it just does. Look at that. Just a little bit of wheel on the dirt there, just to give me a little bit of work to do through the apex. But I just got there, and well, as you'll see in a second, the the time between first and second, whew, you know, it was paper thin in terms of carts. 0.065 of a second. There you go the gap after, well, I think this course is about 1.2 miles long, so 6 miles, uh, 7 minutes odd of driving, no, less than less than a second, that's scary, anyway. Time for some NASCAR, now, the karting, it got my attention, it made me go, damn, okay, this is really going full out to be as real as it can be, and sure enough, when I then later drove some, if you will, street cars with the uh, equivalent street tyre on, I've got a driving licence just to preface this, I've driven real cars, you know, Again, it was the same sensations and feelings. I was going, impressive, impressive. And what it moreover did is it put the thought into my head that this game was realistic enough to actually be a substitute. That if I were given the opportunity, say, to jump into one of these 800 horsepower NAS cars, I'm driving the uh, number 24 Jeff Gordon drive hunger car there, which the camera just focused on. You know, if I had the opportunity to do that, it would play out just like it does in the game. And, and by extension, you know, the Formula One cars that you can get in here, the, the Polyphony Digital Formula One car and the Red Bull prototype cars later on, you know, they all would drive and handle like they would in real life. And that was like a, you know, it was a tipping point for me, the tip of the iceberg. It made me go, how come no other game has done this before now? The thing with racing games on top of that is that it's kind of unfair to compare them, right? Because you can have the very different styles. You can have arcade races, you can have your sim races, you, you know, there, there's a spectrum going on. And it's not fair to compare, say, a Gran Turismo to a Burnout, because, you know, they're intended for different things, okay? So GT5 is meant to be a simulator, you know, it's meant to be very real, whereas Burnout's meant to be arcade and fun. The ultimate goal, though, is fun. And you've got to ask yourself, okay, so it may be realistic as hell, but does that make it a good racing game? You know, it needs to be fun at the end of the day. Well, that depends on your mindset, I guess. Now, I like the challenge, and certainly, for example, driving a big, heavy NASCAR around this 30-kilometer oval, this is uh, Special Stage Route X, which is the 30-kilometer high-speed test track in GT5. Uh, you know, 16, these are AI in, in this race, 16 AI uh, NASCARs, with myself including that, actually, um, you know, 
giving it full throttle 245 miles an hour. The strategy and things that you need to, to play off when you're driving a NASCAR is completely different to a road car or a formula car or anything like that. And in fact I should probably mention that GT5 has actually educated me a lot as well. So before GT5 I was aware of NASCAR but as far as I was you know, concerned it was left turn racing. The second I st stepped into a NASCAR in GT5 I was kind of like, eh, it won't be anything. Boy did it teach me a lesson very quickly, wow. Um, if you literally want gamesmanship and brinksmanship and strategy at 240 miles an hour, you've got it right here, you know. Uh, just look at the AI and what they're doing here. They're all bump drafting each other to try and, you know, pull away from one another. And, uh, you know, I've been caught here. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, very little slipstream trying to catch up. You know, the way that you've got to drive the cars, you feel like you have to drive them as you would in real life. And again, it's coming back to the point, you know, this is real. And I haven't had that from other games. And the thing I guess I was trying to allude to a few minutes ago is that I enjoy that, right? The challenge is a great motivational factor for myself. You know, if I drive a car well and the car's performed well, you know, going back to the, my initial point, you know, it's that balance which makes motor racing. When that happens, you, the sense of satisfaction is enormous. And that's good fun for me. It might not be for everyone, for sure, but for me, that's what I look for. And, you know, driving these NASCARs, you know, I'm having to keep it just at 245 miles an hour, too much, too much gas, the engine would cut out or hit the limiter and sl slow down. You know, it's a great challenge, but when you win, you know, the sense of, yes, you did that and the car did that, it all just comes to the fore and you just feel euphoric. I love that, and that's what GT5 gives me. I mean, Burnout, other arcade games do that as well, but that's for different reasons, you know, Burnout is all about destroying cars and whatnot you know it's it's a different take on racing just as enjoyable for its own reasons but GT5 if you want the simulation experience of what a car's really like I don't think you can beat it now you know there are other, are other racing games on the market I haven't played them all okay and I know that some of the PC racers are far more advanced in terms of what they model and calculate but for I don't know your informed amateur like myself I don't think you can go far wrong with GT5 if you have a PlayStation 3 any interesting cars, pick this up. Seriously, you will not be disappointed. There was some, you know, room, you know, disappointment when the game initially came out, but seriously, today, this game, you cannot go wrong. I kid you not. Anyway, I should wrap this up. So, GT5, guys, is a realistic racer. If you want the challenge and the feel that you're actually driving these cars, GT5 is, you know, that <laughs> it, it, it wrote the book. It is just the way to do it. And uh, unfortunately, I just get tapped there on the exit of that uh, that bank, and that was that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut up. So I've had a, a few requests for how to tune a car up in uh, in racing games. If you want to see that, quite happy to do a video on that. Just leave it down in the comments below. And in fact, if you have any other views or anything like that, please, by all means, leave a comment down below. If you could like, dislike, whatever you believe this video deserves, that'd be fantastic. And if you're new to my videos, you can always subscribe. So guys, I've been Chucky, and I'll see you out on the racetrack. <laughs>